How you doing? It's certainly been a while, but I'm back, and this time with an experiment. When it comes to rocketry, one of the most obvious and important components of the rocket is the nose cone. And don't let its simplicity deceive you, because if you overlook it and get it wrong, things can go really wrong. But I wanted to know, with all these infinite possible shapes a nose cone can have, is it really true, at least at this scale, that the pointier the nose cone, the better? Well, I guess there's only really one way to find out. I'm sorry I was gone, but look, I made you some content. Daddy made you your favorite open wide. Here comes the content. It's a beautiful day to stay inside. So, in order to test this theory that pointier nose cones tend to work better, we needed to define what we'd be testing and how. So with a couple of my friends, we came up with four nose cones that we'd be testing. I thought it would be best to try and keep things simple and limit the experiment to conical nose cones alone. Otherwise, we'd have to consider every possible nose cone shape and variation. The four nose cones that we'd be making and using varied in their summit angle. Basically, the smaller the number, the pointier and longer the nose cone was. They were as follows. A 90 degree nose cone, a 60 degree one, a 42 degree one, and the pointiest of all, the 18 degree nose cone. Now, making these nose cones was no simple process. First, I had to design each cone in a 2D program in order to get the lengths of all the dimensions with the desired angle. I plugged all of that into the best computer aided design software, Tinkercad, to make a 3D model of the cones. I then exported that STL and sent it to my printer, and after a few hours of total print time and some sanding, I had all the nose cones. As for the experiment itself, we'd be just looking at the main metrics like aperture, altitude, speed and acceleration captured by the altimeter 3 that would be velcroed to the inside of each nose cone. With all of that nonsense out of the way, it was time to launch and test each nose cone. Before we move on with the epic rocket launching montage, I need to talk about what you're about to see with the flight with the 42 degree nose cone. This flight by far had the straightest trajectory at launch and ended up going really quite high. And what goes up must come down, but where it comes down is also an important question. Alright, I'll continue the video. Rocket, rocket.
<laughs> Don't worry, we got it out, just off camera. Back to the launches. Alright, I'm ready. Three, two, one. Um, it's on. <clears throat> yeah, that happened too. Turns out there was a short circuit in the igniter. But there was no damage done to the rocket, so we were able to just launch it again. So, for real this time, back to the launches. Now, for the results of this little experiment. Here are the plots for the apogee altitude for each flight. As you can see, they are all pretty much the same, except for the flight with the 42 degree nose cone, which reached an altitude of 87.2 meters. If we were to subscribe to the idea that the pointier the nose cone, the better, then none of this really makes any sense. We figured out that the 10% variability in motor output of the Estes B64 motors we were using and in the wind conditions at launch were enough to cause this discrepancy in the 42 degree flight. The nose cone, simply put, did not have a big enough effect on the aerodynamics of the rocket to outweigh the influence of these other variables. In looking at other metrics, like speed or acceleration, we see that the 42 degree flight outperforms the other rockets, although slightly. This all points to the motor having a higher output for this flight, but importantly that the trajectory of the 42 degree flight at launch was a lot straighter. So, pointy does not necessarily equal good at this scale. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya!